One of the first things you want to do is add your field names. To do this, click on Fields and select Add Field. Here you'll type in a field name. We'll call this one Field 700. Client and Farm. You have drop downs for each. The client drop down is blank, so you'll have to add a client name to begin with. So we'll hit the plus button and type in the client name and then the farm name. Again, I don't have anything entered in, so I'm going to hit the plus button to add a new farm name. I'm going to call this one the home farm. Now, it's really up to you to, uh, to add these different uh, client and farm names. It's really, there's no right or wrong way of doing it, but uh, it is a great way to organize your field. So if you had maybe five or six fields that belong to a specific farm, like the home farm, um, it's a great way to kind of keep all those fields together, especially when you get to the reporting side of the software. Uh, this farm name doesn't have an FSA number tied to it. I am going to tie the, the client to this specific farm name, so that looks great. I'm going to hit save. And now we just added our first client farm field. Now once we add the client in farms, they'll disappear there from the drop down list for the next field that we add. Um, the next step here is to type in the tillable acres. So I'm going to type in 20 for this field. And then we're going to go ahead and actually add a field boundary. Now there's a different ways of adding boundaries to the software. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to import a shapefile as the boundary. And to do this, I'm going to hit that button and choose my shapefile on my hard drive and hit open. And right there is my field boundary. You have different tools up above that allow you to edit the, uh, the boundary or maybe you want to uh, cut out um, a specific spot of that field. We'll show you how these different tools work here, but that's going to be my first way of uh, getting a field boundary into the software for that uh, field 700. If I click on it, I can just hit the delete button and remove that boundary. The other option I'll show you is to actually draw that field boundary using the draw polygon tool. So using that, uh, that tool, I'll just left click my mouse and kind of navigate around that boundary just like that. Going all the way around the field, I'm left clicking all the way up to my starting point here and I'm going to click over that point and that's going to connect my field and create a boundary. Um, the other tool up here is called Subtract by Polygon, which is a very helpful tool if you need to cut out different parts of that field, such as a, a water hole or a grassy area. Same concept there, and basically it just cuts out the acres for that boundary. Now, if you look at, uh, look at the boundary area in the far left here, it says the boundary is 18.03, and I typed in 20 acres. Now, if I want to use 18.03 for my tillable acres, I just hit the little um, button here and it uh, it matches it automatically or I can just override it just by simply typing in the number of acres so the other tabs up above you've got uh, crop legal soil um, this is just additional information that you can fill in about that field uh, the crop is going to be very important to fill out so if I choose corn for example you do have an option here for sub crop so let's say if you grow popcorn or sweet corn or seed corn, uh, you'd be able to specifically pick out those from the drop down list and tie it to that corn crop. Other information here would be our, uh, our bushels per acre for the yield goal. So maybe for this field, we're aiming for 190 bushels per acre. Uh, this is gonna impact the profitability tab on the field manager screen. Other information such as the, the rotation, last year we had wheat crop in 2018. Really it comes down to you how detailed you want to be for this field, but there's a lot of information that you could fill in for that field. Again, going back to the general tab, we can see all the information here. I do want to point out that there's really two other ways of getting the fields and boundaries into the software. The third option would be if you had the Trimble Ag software desktop. Uh, if you had those boundaries and fields already established in the desktop software, there's a really nice sync button that will sync all that data right up to your online account. So that way you don't have to do any of this stuff that I'm doing right now. And then the fourth way is if, let's say you had a Trimble GFX display or maybe a John Deere uh, display with the John Deere Operations Center. Again, with the API and syncing data from a display, those are other ways that we can bring data into the software 
and if that display had good data on it, like the field names and boundaries already established, that's going to automatically populate that data into the software. So there's different ways of actually doing this in the, in the Trimble Egg software. Um, we just went ahead and showed you two options by, by hand drawing it or importing a shapefile. But just know that there's other ways of doing it as well. If we hit the save button, it's going to take us back to the, uh, the client farm field screen. And you can see we now have this new field added. If you need to make any changes to it, there is a little edit button over here that allows you to get back to that same screen.